Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today I'm going to start a subject that's rather near and dear to my heart. And that's because my family comes from a long line of engineers. My father was a mechanical engineer. My grandfather was a civil engineer. My brother is a nuclear maritime engineer. And as a result of that, I've always had a lot of interest in the history of engineering. And nothing talks about the history of engineering more than this item right here. This is called a slide rule. It is an analog computer, and it basically was the badge of a mid-20th century engineer, just like a pocket protector, a white shirt, a skinny black tie, and a crew cut. Now, one thing that I really like about slide rules is that unlike a modern calculator, such as this one on my iPhone, you have to actually understand the numbers and the mathematics behind a slide rule in order to use it. Now, the problem that you run into with calculators is you can get an answer very quickly, but you can also get a wrong answer very quickly and not realize why it's wrong. With a slide rule, you have to actually know what you're doing. So we're going to divide this into two parts. The first part is going to be the basic mathematics of slide rules. We're going to talk about scientific notation, significant figures, and logarithms. And starting from the very first video, we're going to have a look at how the slide rule uses these numbers. So you'll walk away from this video understanding the basics of the C and the D scale on a slide rule, and you'll have access to a virtual slide rule to practice with. It's kind of fun to do once you understand what you're doing, and it gives you a true appreciation for the relationship between numbers, which is something that we're sorely lacking nowadays. So let's get going. There are several parts to a slide rule. The first part is the body of the slide rule, which does not move. Then, of course, you have the slide in the middle. Then you have a movable piece of plastic or glass called a cursor, and on that cursor, you'll have what's called a hairline, which helps you line up numbers. Now, the way the slide rule operates is that you have two rulers that are the same length. And by moving one ruler on top of the other, you can add things together. And in this case, what we're adding is logarithms. For example, here we see the two on what's called the D scale of the slide rule and we've placed the one on the C scale directly above it. By going out to two on the C scale, we multiply two by two and get our resulting answer of four. Likewise, we can multiply two by three and come up with the answer of six. For four by two, there's eight. Division is exactly the opposite. What we'll do with division is we'll take the number that we are dividing something into and put that on the bottom scale, or the, the scale on the stator, in this case the D scale. And then what we're doing to it, we will put directly above it. So for example, in this case we're dividing 5 by 2, then we read back to the index, which is the one on the C scale, and we get our answer, which is 2.5. Now the accuracy of a slide rule is given in something called significant digits. A standard slide rule is 10 inches long, and it is good to about three significant digits. For quick calculations on the fly, we can use a pocket slide rule, and that's five to six inches long, and it's good to two to three significant digits. If you need a little bit more accuracy, you use a big 20 inch monster like this one. This is an Aristo Studio 1068 and it is good to three to four significant digits. And then of course, if you really need insane accuracy, up to five significant digits, you use one of these. This is a Fuller calculator. It has a scale on it, not measured in inches, but measured in feet. This has a spiral scale around this drum that's 41 feet long, and it's good to five significant digits. We're going to learn all about all of these slide rules and the scales on them in future episodes. But today what I want to do is I want to go over the basic mathematical principles behind how a slide rule works so that we understand what we're doing. All right, so let's talk about significant digits. Significant digits have to do with the accuracy and precision of your number. So say we measure something, and on our first measurement we say it's 500 units long. That's one significant digit. 
Now we measure it with a little bit better ruler, one that has a little bit more accuracy, and we find that it's 510 units long. That's two significant digits, one, two. And then we use a micrometer and we get a really precise measurement and we find out that it's actually 512. That would be three significant digits. Now, one thing that we can also add to it, say we change these numbers a little bit. to something like this. These are all four significant digits. These zeros are not significant when they're just to the left of the decimal point. However, if you have something after the decimal point, the implication is that these are also significant as well. Next, we have something called scientific notation, which makes big numbers into small ones. So say we have three numbers, and we express them all as 3.67. However, one is 3.67, times 10 to the 0. The next is 3.67 times 10 to the 1. And finally, we have 3.67 times 10 to the 2. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, 10 to the 0, or any number to the 0, means that you multiply it by 1. So that equals 3.67. 10 to the 1 means that you take this number and multiply it by 10. So you would get 36.7. And finally, 10 to the 2 means that you multiply it by 100, which is 10 squared. So that would equal 367. So let's look at this one right here. What would we have with this? What is 10 times 10 times 10, or 10 to the power of 3? That's 1,000. So that would equal 3,670. Now the next thing that we should talk about is something called exponents. So you saw me use 10 to the power of 3 just a moment ago. And we talked about that equaling 10 times 10 times 10. 1, 2, 3. That's what this 3 means. Now why would we use exponents? So let's use an example of something that could be somewhat difficult to do in your head. So let's multiply 1,000 times 1,000. What's that equal? Well, let's look at that real quick. That's 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3. When you multiply exponents of the same base, you simply add the exponents together. So you would get 10 to the 6, because 3 plus 3 equals 6. If we were to divide 1,000 by 1,000, that's the same as dividing 10 to the 3 by 10 to the 3. If we added when we multiply, it would follow that we subtract when we divide. That's the beauty of the logarithms. So that would equal 10 to the 0, because 3 minus 3 equals 0. Now, any number that's raised to the power of 0 equals 1. Now, the next concept is the concept of what we call logarithms. So we know that 1 times 10 to the 3 equals 1,000. We just saw that up here. Now, can we express this with something called a logarithm? Yes, we can. And the way we denote that is we write log. Then we take the base of our exponent, and we make that the base of the log. Then we take the number, which is 1,000, equals the exponent. So you see, log 10 of 1,000 would equal 3, because 1,000 is 10 raised to the third power. Let's quickly look at a couple of rules of logarithms. OK, so if you want to take a number and multiply it by another number, log of xy, which is the result here, equals log x plus log y. Likewise, log x divided by y 
equals log x minus log y. So you see we take multiplication and division and turn it into addition and subtraction. Log of 20 equals the log of 5 plus the log of 4. Now when we just say log, we're implying that this is base 10. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. So 20 log is 1.3. Five log equals zero point six nine nine plus the log of four. So let's take point six zero two plus point six nine nine, and that will equal one thirty. You can check this for yourself with division, but it works exactly the same way. Now let's see how this works on a slide rule. So here is a nice little British slide rule. We've got two scales on it. We've got a C scale and a D scale. And as you see, the C scale is on the slide and the D scale is on the stator. Say we want to multiply four by five. Well, the first thing that we would have to do is we would have to find a five here and it's right there. Then we put the right index over that 5, and we come out to 4. And as you can see, right underneath it is a 2. And remember, our answer is 5 times 4 equals 20. So this brings up a problem that you have with the slide rule, and that is that you have to be able to figure out where the decimal place belongs. And there's a couple of ways to do that. The first way is obviously 5 times 4 is going to give me a number that's in the tens. It's not going to give me a number between 0 and 9. It's not going to give me a number greater than 100. It's going to be somewhere in the tens. So this is going to be 2 times 10 to the 1. Let's put the index over the 9 and then multiply it by 9. It'll come down here, and if we bring our cursor over and our hairline, we'll see that that is 8.1 something. Now, just by looking at the numbers that we're dealing with, we have a number that's almost 10 multiplied by another number that's almost 10. 10 multiplied by itself is going to be 100. Now, since both of these are just under 10, it's not going to reach 100. It'll probably be in the 10, somewhere between 10 and 99. So when we look at 8.1 here, we're looking at 81. So let's see if we can be like the old-timey engineers and learn how to estimate where to put our decimal place. All right. So here's a rather complex-looking equation. Now, most of us can't do this in our head. And if we did it on a calculator, we'd get the right answer. But we're going to use the slide rule today. So let's go ahead and go through a quick technique that we have. Now this is 3.8 times 10 to the third times 4.1 times 10 to the negative 2 over 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4 times 6.9 times 10 to the 4. Let's go see if we can kind of get a good estimate of this. 3.8 is about 4. 4.1 is also about 4. So if we multiply those together, we're going to get something in the vicinity of 16. Now, we have 10 to the 3 and 10 to the negative 2 here. These are both base 10. So we can simply add these two exponents together. So 3 plus a minus 2 will give us a 10 to the 1. Now, we'll do the same thing underneath. Here we've got about 5 times about 7. That's going to equal about 35. We've got 10 to the negative 4 times 10 to the 4. Negative 4 plus 4 equals 10 to the 0. So what are we going to end up with here? We're going to end up with something on the order of 0 0.5 times 10 to the 1. Because what we're going to do, since we're dividing here, we're going to have 1 minus 0 is 1. What is 
0 0.5 times 10 to the 1. So it's going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 5. Now let's go ahead and do this on the slide rule and see what we can come up with. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find 3.8. So here is 3.8 right here. And then we want to multiply that by 4.1. So we need to put an index, and we can use the right or the left one, over it. And we want to multiply that by 4.1. And what we're going to end up with there is 1.12345, 1 1.54. So we're going to have 1.54 times what? 10 to the 1 over. And then we're going to multiply these together. So we're going to find 5.4. That's right there. And then we're going to multiply. Then we're going to multiply it by 6.9. So we need to put this index over that 5.4 and come out here to 6.9. Then we're going to read straight down, and we're going to get 3.5673. So that's 3.73, and that's times 10 to the what? Minus 4 plus 4 times 10 to the 0. Now all we have to do is we have to take our 1.54, which is right here, we have to divide it by 3.73, which means that we need to put it over, need to put that number over the number we're doing something to. So there's 3.7. And there's about 3.73. And it's going to come out to our answer right here under the index. And we're going to get an answer of about 4.13. Now, 1.54 times 10 to the 1 is about 15.4, and it's divided by 3.73, or 4 or so. Now, doing that on a calculator, there's our answer, 4.1286. But remember our rule on significant figures. How many significant figures do we have here? We have three. And up here we're really only doing two. So our answer here would really be more accurately put out as 4.1. If we did this to two significant figures, it would also be 4.1. So we are accurate. Now obviously here are the different slide rules. Just take the first one. This is a nice little picket and this is very similar to the one that we're using right now. To move this back and forth, you can just put your cursor on the body of the slide rule or the stator and move it so that it's comfortable to you. To move the slide, you just put your cursor on the slide. And then to move the cursor, likewise, you just drag it wherever you want it. You can also increase the magnification a little bit in case it's a little difficult to see. You can have a look at the other side. Now these are some interesting conversions because what you can do is say you can convert miles to kilometers. And this is another function of the slide rule that we'll go over at a later time. This is a little bit more like uh, one of my pickets. And as you see, there's a lot of different scales on here. And we'll go over these as time goes on. But for the meantime, just stick with a simple one. Learn the very basics of it. If you want to, you can actually play with these conversions and learn a little bit about those and do that on your own. Now, when we come back, we're going to learn a little bit more about using logarithms, and we're also going to have a look at some of the other scales, specifically the A and the B scale and the K scale. So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy, and remember, it's not the size of the rule that matters, it's the slip of the stick. Take care, guys.